Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty awesome little mini PC. I mean, we got a super small form factor and a lot of power out of this little box. This is coming to us from ASRock and it's known as the Nuckbox 1165G7. Recently on my channel, I took a look at the 1135G7 industrial single board computer from ASRock. I'll leave a link if you want to check that out. This is basically the big brother to that board, but instead of being a bare PCB, this comes enclosed inside of a case, and when it comes down to the specs, this is basically the same thing as the new Tiger Lake Intel Nux. We have that 11th gen Tiger Lake i7 CPU with XE graphics built in, and Thunderbolt support, so you can connect an eGPU to this. And overall, I've been a big fan of these Tiger Lake CPUs, especially those built-in Intel XE graphics. They do a great job with gaming and emulation. So along with the NUC box itself, we're also going to get a few accessories in here. I believe we just have our power cable for the included power supply, which is a 19 volt, 90 watt power supply. It also includes a little extra hardware like M.2 screws. We get a user manual and a VESA mount bracket. Overall, I think it's a nice clean design, and as for I.O., up front here we have an audio jack, two USB Type-C ports, and a single USB 3.2 port. This does support Thunderbolt, and these are waiting on USB 4.0 certification to be verified, but uh, it does work with Thunderbolt accessories very well. Not much going on around the sides here, we do have some ventilation, but when we move around back here, we have our power input, two more USB 3.2 ports, full-size HDMI, full-size display port. One of these supports gigabit ethernet, the other one supports 2.5. All in all, you can have four displays connected to this mini PC, two via the USB Type-C ports on the front, one over HDMI, and one over display port. These do come bare bones, so you will have to add your own RAM and storage. I'm going to go with 16 gigabytes of dual channel RAM running at 3200 megahertz and a cheaper Kingston 256 gigabyte M.2. Four screws on the bottom. You can remove the bottom plate here. And we do have room for a 2.5 inch drive, be it mechanical or an SSD. It'll mount right here to the bottom plate, and it does come included with the cable. This will support up to 64 gigabytes of dual channel RAM, and the fastest we can do is 3200 megahertz. I'm going with 16 in this. It has an AX Wi Fi card already pre installed, so we do have Wi Fi 6, and a single free M.2 slot for our storage. So putting something like this together is super easy. I'm just going to go ahead and pop my RAM in here. And if you end up getting something like this, make sure you run this in dual channel. Two sticks of RAM, you're going to get much better performance out of it. I'm going to go ahead and throw my M.2 drive in here. But keep in mind, if you don't want to go M.2, you can run everything from a 2.5 inch drive. We have enough room and the cable is included. So we're all set up, ready to go. I've mounted my M.2 drive down. We got our RAM installed, storage. All that's really left to do is install my operating system. This will run Linux or Windows. I'm going to go with Windows 10 Pro. But before we get into some testing, I wanted to go over the quick specs. For the CPU, we have that 11th Gen Tiger Lake i7 1165G7. This will run up to 55 watts in this little box by changing it to performance in the BIOS. 4 cores, 8 threads, base clock of 2.8 with a boost up to 4.7, built-in Intel Iris XE graphics at 1300 MHz, and this will support up to 64GB of DDR4, running at 3200 MHz. Real quick, I just wanted to show you what I changed in the BIOS. I wanted to get the maximum performance out of this. From Advanced, we're going to go to CPU Configuration, and at the very bottom, CPU Operation Mode, from the factory, it's set to normal. This is going to run at 28 watts. You're going to get pretty decent performance. But when we change this to performance mode, this will run up to 55 watts. Well, 54 point something watts. And uh, i got to say it does make a big difference, but it creates a lot more heat. So you also want to change this fan curve. This is the default setting that it's going to run with. You can go to full on or automatic mode. I usually set this to six and it seems to be fine. It does hit around 81 degrees Celsius under extreme load, but it's still under that threshold. And just to show you that this little CPU will go up to 55 watts in performance mode, I'm going to run Prime95. I have hardware info running over here, and this is the CPU package power. 54 watts, right under 55, and this is pretty crazy when you think about it because this is a mobile chip. So let's run some benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 1431, multi, 5421. Keep in mind, this is a quad core chip. You will see higher multi core scores out of the higher core count AMD CPUs, but when it comes to single core, this is doing an amazing job. 
Next up, we have 3D Mark Knight Raid with a 16,952, Fire Strike 4,406, and Time Spy with a 1,676. Let's go ahead and check out some real world gaming on this little box. First up, we have Valorant 1080p, medium settings, got an average of 124 FPS. And if we take a look up in the top left hand corner, this is maxing out around 38 watts while playing this game. Genshin Impact, 1080p, medium settings, it ran at a constant 60. Unfortunately, when I jacked this up to high, we were around 57 FPS. You could run this at 30 if you wanted to at higher ultra settings, but medium still looks great, and it's running super smooth. It did pretty well with Fortnite, 1080p, high, medium mix, we averaged 96 FPS. When I had this at high, I noticed a lot of stutter, so I turned a few settings down to medium, and it just started to run a lot better. Overwatch 1080p, high, medium mix, we averaged 74 FPS. Again with this one, I tried epic and high, and it's just not going to do it. You will have to drop some of those settings down. I've always been super disappointed with GTA performance when it comes to these built-in XE graphics. I dropped this down to 900p, normal settings, and I could only average 54 out of it. And finally, for PC gaming on the built-in XE graphics, Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low, got an average of 32 FPS. So for this thing, being such a small form factor PC with integrated graphics, I think it does a pretty decent job with PC gaming. Given the form factor of this tiny PC, I think performance is great, but we can get a GPU boost by plugging in an eGPU. We have Thunderbolt on this unit. So what I have here is my 550 watt Sonnet eGPU dock paired with an ASRock 5700 XT. And this should actually offer some really great 1440p gaming performance. Now when using an eGPU with a small PC like this, make sure your HDMI is coming out of the video card itself. It is possible to use the built-in HDMI on the little machine itself, but it kills a lot of the bandwidth. And yeah, we're getting great performance. This is Forza Horizon 4. 1440p, ultra settings, I'm getting an average of 82 FPS out of this thing. And as you might remember, we weren't getting great performance with GTA 5 and the built-in XE graphics, but with the eGPU, I was able to take this up to very high settings, 1440p, with an average frame rate of 96 FPS. So yeah, this is more than playable on a setup like this. So in the end, the Nookbox 1165G7 is a great performing little mini PC. It's actually one of the best that I've tested with no dedicated GPU. Now, as we saw, we can always add a Thunderbolt eGPU and get great performance out of it with gaming. But like it sits by itself, I think it's a solid performer. And it's definitely one of the best performing Tiger Lake CPUs that I've tested so far. And it really comes down to us being able to take that TDP up really high with this little mini PC. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. This is definitely something that I could recommend if you're looking for a small form factor PC. It is a great performer with those XE graphics. And later on down the road, you can always add an eGPU. So I'm planning on putting out one more video with this 1165G7. I got a couple little things planned. But if there's anything you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below and I can throw it in that one. If you're interested in picking something like this up, I will leave a few links in the description. But like always... Thanks for watching.